JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for October the 15th. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained against uh, the Aussie, the Kiwi, NOC and the Canadian dollar in that order, while it lost ground versus the pound, the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, the euro and SEC. Now the strengthening of the safe havens, franc and yen, combined with the weakening of the commodity linked Aussie, Kiwi and Looney, suggests uh, that uh, markets continue trading in a risk of fashion yesterday and, and today in Asia. Indeed, uh, looking at the performance in the equity world, we see that um, although major EU indices ended their sessions uh, mixed, the US ones closed in negative waters with the risk aversion rolling into the Asian session today. Even though China's Shanghai Composite is nearly unchanged, Japan's Nikkei 225, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI are down 0.54, 1.33 and 0.66% respectively. It seems that concerns over, the, over a delay in distributing a coronavirus vaccine continue to weigh on market sentiment, with a fresh downbeat comments over a new US fiscal package adding to those worries. Yesterday, US Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said that uh, getting something done before the election and executing on that would be difficult, diminishing even further any hopes that a bipartisan deal before the election uh, could happen. Remember that on uh, Tuesday, House Democrats rejected a 1.8 billion US dollars offer from President Trump. As uh, for our view, it has not changed. Looking at the charts, the technical picture of several stock indices, especially the US ones, remains relatively positive, which means that uh, the latest retreat may be an opportunity for some buyers to jump back into the, uh, into the action. That said, we repeat for the umpteenth time that even if we see a rebound in uh, the next uh, days, we are reluctant to trust a long-lasting recovery. We will stick to our day-by-day -day approach, especially with daily COVID cases hitting a new record yesterday. On top of that, as we get closer to the US election day, we believe that investors will start getting more cautious, avoiding large positions that could result uh, in major market moves. Now, back to the currencies. The Aussie was... Um, was uh, the main loser among the, G10, uh, the G10s coming under strong uh, selling interest after RBA Governor Philip Law said uh, that more stimulus is possible with the options including bond buying and uh, a small rate cut. At its latest gathering, the RBA kept its monetary policy settings unchanged, disappointing those looking for further easing after Deputy Governor Guy de Bell flagged the prospect. Now, Governor Lowe's remarks may have revived speculation on that front, with the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures uh, yield curve suggesting a 66% probability for a 25 basis points rate cut at the upcoming uh, gathering. The British pound was the main gainer, helped by headlines that the UK and the EU had made some progress in trade talks uh, this week, while reports noted that the two sides are willing to continue, uh, are willing to continue negotiations past their mid-October deadline. Remember that the EU chief uh, Brexit negotiator uh, Michel Barnier already said that talks could continue, but the UK's position was not that clear. Thus, yesterday's reports have cleared uh, the picture as they suggest uh, that uh, the UK will not walk away from the negotiating table after the EU submit uh, starting today. 
With all that in mind, we will uh, pay close attention to the summit for clues as uh, to how willing the two sides are in finding common ground. More positive remarks are likely to keep the pound supporter supported, while the opposite may be true in case there is a disappointment, namely comments that uh, the gap of differences is very hard to close. As uh, Now, as for the rest of today's events, uh, besides uh, the headlines surrounding the EU summit, we will also monitor the US initial jobless claims for last week, the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index for October, as well as the Energy Formation Administration weekly report on crude oil inventories. Initial jobless claims are expected to have declined somewhat to 825,000 from 840,000, while the New York Index is forecast to have slid to 15 from 17. The Energy Formation Administration report is, um, is anticipated to show that uh, oil inventories slid 2.835 million barrels after rising 0.501 million. That said, bearing in mind that uh, the American Petroleum Institute uh, reported a 5.422 million barrels slide, we would see the risks surrounding the Energy Formation Administration forecast as tilted to the downside. We also have uh, five speakers on today's agenda, and those are ECB President Christine Lagarde, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan, Fed Board Governor Randall Quarles, Bank of Canada Deputy Governor Timothy Lane and Bank of England Deputy Governor John Cunliffe. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you, seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.